Hi friends, thanks for joining me today. I am super excited because this morning while I was reading my scriptures, I feel like a bunch of <clears throat> different pockets of knowledge came together in a way that brought me some real clarity. And so my hope this morning, <coughs> excuse me, is to be able to convey that. Because when I am able to teach somebody, the things that I'm learning come together more clearly for me when I can actually articulate them. And so I'm gonna do my best to try to articulate all the stuff that's going on in my brain right now and get it out and to you in a way that hopefully makes a lot of sense. And um, I'm reading in Doctrine and Covenants section 38, which if you're not familiar with what the Doctrine and Covenants are, the most simply put is that it's a series of revelations given to the prophet Joseph Smith by the Lord Jesus Christ for the establishment and restoration of his church, Jesus Christ's church, on the earth in these latter days. And so in section 38, the Lord is telling them that they need to move to Ohio. And in verse 15, he's saying, fear not, for the kingdom is yours. So we've been talking a lot about fear. So we're going to hold that in our thoughts here for a minute. Fear not. And then down in verse 22, he says, Hear my voice and follow me, and you shall be a free people. Okay, they're, they're going to be a free people. And he actually then tells them that um, the only laws that you need to worry about are my laws, God's laws, because I am the lawgiver. Um, and then he wants them to teach one another according to the office wherewith I have appointed you. So everybody is given a job, an office, and within that office, teach people. Okay. And then he says, let every man esteem his brother as himself and practice virtue and holiness before me. Okay. So. Just because you have been given an office that is different than somebody else's doesn't mean it's better, more important, or that you can use it to think of yourself as ruling over somebody else. So you esteem your brother as yourself. Okay, and again, I say unto you, let every man esteem his brother as himself. So he says it twice in case you didn't get it the first time. Um, and then he goes and gives a parable that says, For what man among you, having twelve sons, and is no respecter of them, and they serve him obediently. And he saith unto one, Be thou clothed in robes, and sit thou here. And to the other, Be thou clothed in rags, and sit thou there. And looketh upon his sons, and saith, I am just. So everyone's doing the same amount. They're all being obedient. Okay? But you're saying that your obedience is more important, so you get a robe. And your obedience is less important, so you get rags. Okay? So what man would do that? I wouldn't do that. The Lord's saying, I wouldn't do that. Why would you do that? Um, and then he says, Behold, this I have given unto you as a parable, and it is even as I am. I say unto you, be one, and if ye are not one, ye are not mine. So we're talking about this unification. We've talked about unification before as well. Um, let's see. And again, I say unto you that the enemy is in the secret chambers uh, in the secret chambers seeketh your lives. So the enemy is in secret and he's plotting to take your life. Okay. Um, and then he's telling them that you've heard about wars and everything and, and goes on. So what I want to talk about right now is right here. God's plan equals freedom. Okay. So if God's plan equals freedom, and we just take those verses that we just talked about, what does that mean? And um, part of this coming together, I want to talk about another, sneak another principle in here about the learning process. Unification, okay? This is another way to unify, um, and that is unifying your knowledge. Because I had a lot of different pieces of knowledge that um, made sense on their own. But when I pulled them all together into one this morning, like all the dots kind of came together and there was one big understanding. 
um, which is super cool. I feel like I snuck into Satan's lair, had a look at his playbook, and now I can be like, mm, I got you. I know what your plans are. Um, and so all those different pieces were things like rich versus poor. What is all the knowledge and feelings um, and thoughts that I have about rich and poor? Um, unity. We've already talked about there's different types of unity. Okay. Body and spirit, people, knowledge. Um, let's see here. We know that all men are created equal. And here we've got the Lord saying, don't esteem anybody over another person. That's equality. Um, kings versus serfs, the servants, you know, who, who are the ruling class and who are the subjects? Okay. Um, and should there be some, should there be any? And then we've got the educated versus the uneducated. Um, who's above the rule of law? There are some people who are above the rule of law. And we know in our government today, people in the government um, are above the rule of law. How do we know this? Because I can't print money to pay my bills. I would be thrown in jail. The government can print money. Um, the government can cover up secrets. They can do all kinds of things. And um, if I were to do those things, I would be thrown in jail. Try not to get specific. <laughs> um, <coughs> and then what do I know about drugs and immorality? If you look around the world today, what is the main focus? Everybody wants to be able to take drugs. Everybody wants to be able to have sex with whoever they want, have no rules. But then we have um, sexual assault. And how does that fit in if there are no rules, but there are rules? Um, and there's just mass confusion. Um, and so what, what is the purpose of creating mass confusion? Um, and so this whole unifying of all this information um, comes together in a way that um, also in Doctrine and Covenants in section 8, the Lord is saying, don't worry, I will tell you all things that you need to know in your mind and in your heart. And if you think, okay, there's two different things, what does that mean? And so it, with your mind, you can think, I think, and the heart is, I feel. And when those two come together, you get understanding, okay? And so what does all this mean? And I was trying to, when I was pulling it all together, I thought of uh, Seth Godin, who talks about um, fear of failure means it equals fear of freedom. So we know freedom is God's plan. And what does it mean if we fear failure that we fear freedom? Well, what comes with freedom? Freedom comes with gaining your own understanding, um, doing what you can on your own, uh, being obedient. All 12 of the sons were obedient. If I try something and fail, then I fail on my own merits. But if somebody else told me what to do, then that's their failure. I don't have to claim it. Um, and so this fear of failure is keeping us from wanting freedom. It's keeping us from wanting to make decisions on our own. And it's helping to widen the gap between the educated and the uneducated. And if you look at the, the 12 sons and you think, okay, well, everyone just needs a robe then. Because that's what the Lord said. Yes, but they were all obedient. And so if I give somebody a robe who has not been obedient, who is not um, honoring their freedom, their ability to make choices for themselves, and I give that to them, then they are still a servant to me now. Because I... I'm above them. I have given them something. And so if we're all together, if we're all unified, we respect each other where we're at and we want to help each other. I respect the struggle. I respect the fear because I know that fear is attached to freedom and I want you free. I don't want you enslaved. And so all these other things, what is keeping us enslaved? What is keeping us from wanting to think for ourselves? Um, what is keeping us numb um, and distracted on other things? And so um, all this stuff comes together. These dots get connected. 
And I know I'm trying to give you a shortcut to understanding this and I could be failing miserably. I have no idea how the connection is coming out right now. But each of us, I want you to be free and to connect these dots yourself. So I want you to go on a search for connecting these dots. What does this actually mean? And how do you connect those dots? How does the heart and the mind come together? And that's through study, ponder, prayer, and application. You have to do the work yourself. You have to gain this understanding and then take this unification out there in the world and how do we, how do we unify? How do we have freedom? What is Satan's plan? What's in his playbook? How does he keep us from being free? Because freedom is God's plan. Satan has a plan too, and that is bondage. And so hopefully this got somebody excited to take a journey, and I pray that it made some sort of sense. Um, and thanks so much for watching and allowing me to try and figure this out even more, getting it from my brain to my heart to my mouth. Um, and make some sort of sense. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it and we'll see you next time.